as I'm sure you know, house prices have gone up steadily over the last several years. And in Excelsior Springs and many communities around us, the average home sales price is now over 250,000, which makes it incredibly difficult to purchase a home if you're in the market to buy a home, and especially if you're a first time buyer. So today I wanna to talk about how to navigate the rising cost of housing in our market. Hi, my name is Deanna Bradford. I'm a realtor with Reese Nichols Realtors Excelsior Springs, part of the Bill Hightower team. So today we're going to talk about five tips to help you if you are struggling to afford a home in this market. Tip number one is to get pre-approved. Before you even set out to look at properties, you need to know what you can afford, how much the sales price of the home is that you qualify for, and how much the monthly payment is going to be, and how much is the out-of-pocket cost for you going to be. You want to ask those questions when you get pre-approved with your lender. And make sure to shop around. You might have other lenders that have other options that could help you to be able to afford a same valued price home for a lower payment, depending on the loan program that they have available to you. So make sure you shop around, get pre-approved, know what the sales price is that you qualify for, and make sure you're comfortable with what that monthly payment will be. Tip number two, be prepared to make a competitive offer. When you find a home that meets all the criteria you're looking for, including your budget, and you're ready to put an offer in on that home, don't think you're going to be able to ask for less or ask for a lot of things from the seller. If that home is priced reasonable and is in good condition and is in a hot market and there's not much available around it, you will have to be competitive in order to have the winning offer. So make sure that you have an idea of what kind of things you can put in an offer to make you stand out above the rest and get an offer accepted. Some things could be something as simple as making sure you don't ask the seller to pay anything. Don't ask the seller to pay your closing costs if you can afford to pay those yourselves. Don't ask for a home warranty. You can always buy that yourself as well. Either waive a home inspection, which I don't recommend, or give yourself the right to have a home inspection, but maybe waive the right to negotiate. If there's something majorly wrong with the home, you can still cancel the contract. But if there are things wrong that you're willing to take care of yourself, you'll at least know that you have a sound purchase and that you are comfortable moving forward. And the seller has peace of mind that you're not going to ask for repairs because of a home inspection. So another tip for putting in a competitive offer. And there are a lot of other things that you can do in an offer to make it super competitive. Do your research, talk to your local realtor, and come up with a competitive offer to make sure you get your offer accepted. Tip number three, consider buying a fixer-upper. Now, I will say there's a caveat to that. It depends on your loan type and how much fixing the house needs, whether or not that home is going to work for certain types of loans. So make sure you educate yourself on the type of loan you have and what that's going to mean for any requirements it may have for the house itself. But as long as you find a home that maybe is priced a little less because it needs some repair and you're willing to take those on and that's something you're able to do and comfortable doing, then there might be an opportunity there to buy something under what market value is, put a little sweat equity into it, and then gain equity right away and have a home that you can be proud of. Tip number four, really pare down what your must-haves in a house are and consider looking for a house that might not be quite all the things on your checklist. Be willing to knock some of those things off. Maybe you really want to be in a super desirable neighborhood but because of that, the homes there cost more. Consider looking at homes in another area that maybe isn't quite as expensive, but still a good neighborhood. You can find homes that might be more affordable in your price point. 
Tip number five, if you can afford a home and you can purchase a home and get a roommate to help it share in the expenses, that's a great way to start off building long-term real estate wealth. If you can eventually turn that home into your first rental and buy your second home, then you're on the start to longevity wealth. But it's also a way to help you just afford the cost of living right now in a home. Sometimes what you are approved for in a mortgage is not necessarily what you can afford. So if you can afford it and get a roommate to help cover the expenses, then that's a great way to help pay down that equity quicker and start building long-term wealth, as well as just be able to get in a home to begin with, especially if you're just starting out. This works really well for somebody who doesn't necessarily have a family or it's a loved one that can help both out by letting a loved one live with you and share the cost of the home. So it's another idea of a way to afford a home in this really expensive market that we have right now for those that are really struggling to get an affordable home that um, doesn't cost them over and above what they can afford on a monthly basis. So something to consider there as well. In addition to these five tips, there are a few other things that you can do. First of all, just doing your research. Make sure that you know the market that you're interested in purchasing a home in. What is the average sales price of homes going for in that neighborhood? As well as how many days on market are they? So how many days are they taking before they um, go into contract? How quickly are they selling? That's going to tell you how hot the market is there and um, how quickly homes are going. Or if you're going to struggle to compete with other buyers for homes in that market, knowing that's going to help you to know what kind of an offer to give on the homes in the in those neighborhoods. Also, make sure you know what the interest rate is running at any given time. So keep in communication with your lender and know what interest rates you qualify for and what they are running at the time. I have many buyers that as they're looking and they see a house that they might be interested in putting an offer in, they call their lender and find out what the payment's gonna be right then before they make an offer because the interest rate could have changed and um, the payment's going to vary depending on the area because of taxes and insurance. And so you make sure you ask them your closing costs as well. Make sure you know all that information up front one, to help you make a solid, good, competitive offer, and two, to make sure that you're not putting yourself in over your head and then have to back out later because you find out it's going to be too expensive for you. So being well-educated, doing the research before you even start looking at homes is super important. And then be patient. Patience is hard. And especially in this market where there's not a lot of inventory, homes don't come for sale often, or when they do, they go really fast. So being patient is super important. We have a very cyclical market over the year. Um, it, it fluctuates, right? Different seasons of the year. We have a hotter market and then a slower market, and then it'll pick up again. Uh, during different certain times of the year. So just remember that when you uh, when you are uh, in the process of looking for a home and just try to be patient and stay encouraged. You're not the only one going through it. And if you can hold out for the long term, you'll be so grateful when you finally are able to find your perfect home. I hope that all these tips are helpful to you. And if so, I hope you'll like this video. That helps me a lot with my channel. And so I appreciate it when you like my videos and leave a comment. I'd love to get your feedback. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on this topic. If you have a question, make sure to leave that in the comments as well. And I'd love to answer any of your questions that you may have. And like always, please subscribe and hit the bell notification if that's something you haven't already done so that you get notified when I put new videos out each week. I try really hard to bring you as much of the information as I can that's going to help you to be proactive and successful in becoming a homeowner. So I hope that you really do find value in my videos and this one in particular. Thanks for joining me today. I really do appreciate it and have a blessed day.